episode short. This call is now being recorded. Am I audible, Rita? Please check. Yes, yes. You are completely audible. Um, good evening, everyone. I cordially inviting you all, all of you, all the all the, all the audience and speakers for today's presentations. As today we are going to start a very interesting topic. From the title, you all have already known about what today's session is all about. But how many of us are really accustomed with the term mindful eating? So I'm giving to give a brief discussion about the topic that uh, um, we all widely know. It is all by widely known that nutrition plays a key role in our physical health. But studies also shows that nutrition directly affects our mental and emotional well-being too. Good health describes conditions condition of optimal well-being. That means the body and the mind operating in harmony. Both are equally important when defining health journey. So without taking much time, I would like to introduce our today's speaker. The speaker, uh, the first speaker is Tanaya Banerjee. She has completed her BSc from Acharya Prafula Chandra College. She has done her MSc from Sarda Margas College. She has also completed her 10-month internship from R. N. Tagore Institute of Cardiac Science. She has done her diabetes educator course from Day Organization. She also completed her weight management course from Cognizant Nutrition in collaboration with Ms. Bijaya, uh, Bijaya Mukherjee, professor of uh, uh, Miti University. She has completed her six-month med medical nutrition therapy course from Cognizant Nutrition. Previously, she was working as a nutrition faculty as VLC, at VLCC Institute, Hyderabad. Currently, she is working as a diabetic educator at CIPLA. Next slide, please. Okay. Our next speaker is Sagarika Paul. She has completed her BSc in Food and Nutrition from Viharilal College of Human Social Science and the CEO of Calcutta Catara University. She has completed her MSc in Food and Nutrition from the same university. She has qualified UGC NEET. 2013. She was working as a part-time teacher in nutrition in a government high school. Working as an assistant teacher in a government primary school, she has completed an MNT course from Cognite Nutrition and currently she is working as a practicing dietitian. Our next speaker is Ms. Srija Chatterjee. She has completed her BSc in Food and Nutrition from Ramsade College, Calcutta University. She is, she is currently pursuing her MSc in Diabetes Food Service Management from KPC Medical College and Hospital. And now simultaneously, she is doing her MNT course on Cognitive Nutrition. And our last speaker is Anantrita Datta. She has completed her MSc Food and Nutrition from Ramsadeh College and currently pursuing MSc in Diabetes Food and Service Management from KPC Medical College and Hospital on the IGNU. And simultaneously, she is doing her MNT course from Cognitive Nutrition. So without any delay, I would like to hand over the platform to Ms. Alankita Datta to give the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Fatma, for this warm introduction. First of all, good evening, sir and everyone. Before starting today's presentation, I would like to thank you, Shomendu Sat and Cognizant Nutrition for giving me this opportunity and this wonderful platform. And also, I like to thank you, everyone, for being present. Without any delay, I would like to start today's presentation mindfully. Okay. So, mindful. What do you mean by mindfully? In a simple way, we are. We know what is mindful eating is what our mind wants to eat. Mood comes after our mind. Next slide, please. Okay, so mood disorder. What is mood disorder? We can say mood disorder in simple language as the onset of any mental illness. Sudden sadness, sudden happiness, sudden anger is what we can see or call in this disorder. There are three major kinds of mood disorder include depressive, manic 
and bipolar. We will get to know more about this disorder. Next slide, please. Okay, so types of mood disorder. There are two major types of mood disorder, which is unipolar disorder and bipolar disorder. Unipolar, the term uni means one, which means one major reason seems in this disorder. That is major depressive disorder and also leads to dysthymic disorder. Bipolar, bipolar means two or many reasons. That is bipolar one, bipolar two and cyclomic disorder. Psychothymic disorder. Okay. In the upcoming slide, we will get to know more about this disorder. Okay, next slide, please. Symptoms of mood disorder. The symptoms are very common in people of different ages in this. Day. I hope everyone here are seeing uh, seen these these syndromes of at one and other time. They are lack of interest, eating more or less. Lack of sleep, anxiety, fatigue, crying, and etc. Next slide, please. Okay. So, unipolar disorder. There are many reasons for this unipolar disorder, like biological, physiological, and social origin of disorder, which can cause changes of brain function. It can be considered as major depressive disorder and dysthymic disorder. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So, depression. Depression is very common word in those days, belonging to people of any age or any society. We have heard that in our daily life, mein depression is going on, depression is going on, depressed. Hai. So, what does it actually mean? People say that depression is tense, hai, stressed. What is the actual meaning? We don't know anything. We are stressed, we are tensed, we are depressed. But we are to hum batayate, no, no, we are totally fine, we are good. If we are depressed, so our body may have symptoms, symptoms which should not be neglected. These symptoms which are coming our body due to this disorder. Okay, so next slide, please. So stress, though it's very short term, but it's important way more than it is. Stress is a cause of depression. Our daily life, mein jo hum kaam karte hai, wo kaam se nahi ho raha hai. Isiliye hum bolte hai ki hum stress ho ja raha hai. Stress, stress me hume bhot uh, problem ho jata hai kaam karne me. There are many types of stress like body stress, mind stress, in emotional, emotional stress and behavior stress also there are many biological terms or neurotransmitter like uh, uh, dopamine serotonin glutamate etc next slide please body stress mein humne fatigue headache skin irritation ye sab kuch ho sakta hai we are totally ignored kar, ignored but ye sab kuch stress mein hi hota hai mind stress stress mein hame foggy thinking Overthinking, negativity ho jata hai. Also emotional stress like depression, losing our confidence and behavior stress mein accident prone things like suicide, loneliness, yeh sab kuch ho sakta hai. Joh hume shayad ignore nahi karna chahiye, but hum waise hi ignore kar dete hai. Okay, so this beer, uh, okay, so next slide, uh, symptoms. In previous slide, I totally mentioned all the symptoms like nervous, heavy, social life, withdrawal, increasing caffeine, alcohol, or many more 
syndromes are seen in this stress condition. Next slide, please. In a simple word, it is long-lasting from depression. আমরা যখন ডিপ্রেস থাকি তখন আমাদের বিভিন্ন জিনিস আমরা নেগলেক্ট করতে শুরু করি যেটা আমাদের হয়তো নেগলেক্ট করা ঠিক নয় এবং ডিপ্রেশন স্টেটে থাকাকালীন আমরা অনেক কিছু থাকতে থাকতে সেটা ডাইসেমিক ডিসঅর্ডারে কনভার্ট হয় ব্যানার্জি So she will discuss about bipolar disorder. Okay. So am I audible? Yes, you yes, are audible. audible and completely visible. You can, can okay. continue. Okay. So thank you so much, Anankrita, for such a nice, uh, brief explanation about mood disorder and about unipolar disorder. I would like to take a moment to thank Cognize Nutrition and all the faculty, especially Shomendu sir, for giving me this opportunity for such a learning uh, experience which we are having. Thank you so much, sir. And also, I would like to thank Fatma and Preeta for such nice moderation and also helping us in each and every pathway. Okay. So without uh, further, I will start with the uh, second type of uh, mood disorder, which is termed as bipolar disorder. Now, as you see in the screen, uh, there are two arrows which are given. One side, it is depicting mania, which is a red color box. And another side, it is depicting depression. So, like this, bi means two. So, you will have or you will see two types of symptoms which are present in this particular disorder. Now, how to detect it? So, there will be various way of counseling. There will be various way of test which will be done to diagnose the phases. Now, I will like to give a quick example to explain this one. For example, a particular patient is being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So, a patient will be uh, seen with a phase of depression for a long phase of time. For example, a particular seven weeks or completely one week, two weeks like that, a person is in depressive stage. Now, suddenly, and from the next day, the person starts behaving something which is not in that particular person's trait. For example, the person will be very much hyperactive or the person will be very much into uh, activity like, for example, singing or having some uh, uh, sort of different characteristic which is not there in that particular person's trait. So this particular two sight of uh, changing of the face of the particular person will be considered as a bipolar disorder symptoms. Okay. Now the bipolar disorder can be differentiated into two types. Next slide, please. Okay. Now this slide, I will be uh, giving a detail about uh, maniac episode why because this maniac episode is a differentiating factor between unipolar disorder and the bipolar disorder now what happened in this maniac episode is there will be some expansive irritable and some mood elevation which a particular person will be seen for example at a severe uh, depression the person is suffering suddenly there will be a switch of uh, mind which the person will see and there will be some hyperactive energy which can be a uh, 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 aggressive one which can be can lead a person to a hospitalization also on the other hand the person can be very much ha happy very much uh, nicely doing the particular activities but it is a lightly elevated from what the usual normal basic lifestyle goes on 
Now, what are the signs which will be detecting the maniac episode? So, definitely there will be an euphoric uh, situation where the person will feel that I have been in trance. There will be some delusion. There will be a hyperactiveness where energy will be too much high. There will be some impulsive decision which the person can take. For example, a 16-year or a child who is having this currently maniac phase can do some impulsive disorder, impulsive uh, situation or impulsive uh, food ordering or impulsive shopping, which is not a usual thing which we do in our regular lifestyle. So these are the various uh, symptoms and signs which will be seen in maniac cases only. And the last will be the hallucination. So that will be a chronic stage where there will be some excessive physical abuses, uh, self-harm and hallucination can be seen. And also that can aggravate to some suicidal, suicidal condition as well. Okay, next slide please. Okay, now this slide is nothing but just the differentiation of bipolar disorder and the uh, types of bipolar disorder. So now what are the two types of bipolar disorder? One is the bipolar disorder 1 and another is bipolar disorder 2. Now in bipolar disorder 1, there will be one single hypomanic episode followed by a depressive episode or the vice versa. And mainly the person will be uh, facing this mood sw swings and also this particular phase of depression and maniac thing will be persisting for a longer time and that will definitely harm or uh, the particular person's usual day-to-day -day lifestyle will be hampered. And the second one will be the bipolar 2 disorder. So bipolar 2 means there will be an aggressive or aggravation of the chronicness of the disease. There will be definitely an hypomanic and a manic and a depressive situation. But the switch between the hypomanic, manic and the depressive situation, the person will be uh, uh, normally behaving, but then this can aggravate and also in the bipolar 2 criteria the person can suffer from various other mental disorders for example the person may lead to some schizophrenia anxiety all these other mental disorder can also be seen in bipolar 2 disorder next slide Okay, before explaining this slide, I would like to say that bipolar disorder is not uh, a one particular uh, reason behind or there is no particular diagnosis which has been done. There are several, many particular genetic or environmental or neurodegeneration which can cause this bipolar disorder. Now, giving uh, this close diagram a relation, how manic or how depression can occur in our person's or patient's life. Now, in the lower part of the picture, you can see that there is a white matter part which is showing different part of our, a single part of our brain. Now, this particular brain uh, sections are there which is giving us orbitofrontal cortex, there are antithalamus, there is hypothalamus, there is hippocampus, there is amygdala and there is also some lingual anterior signal cortex. Now this particular whole parts of our brain contains white matter. Now this brain is responsible for learning, responsible for cognitive development, responsible for smell, test, motor and sensory signaling. So what happened in particular uh, bipolar and unipolar disorder is when we are uh, going to particular mood disorder or there we can see some abuse is happening, there is some anxiety, there is some depression which is causing our brain to produce a lot of inflammation, then the limbic system which is constituted of this particular part of our brain is being damaged. So when this limbic system is getting damaged, then the signaling of the brain is hampered. So as you can see in the uh, 
the upper part of the diagram the limbic network giving signaling to the 5-HT. So what is 5-HT? This 5-HT is 5-hydroxytryptamine signaling which is also known as serotonin signaling. So this particular signaling get hampered when there is limbic De network de uh, degeneration. So this particular degeneration happens when there is inflammation and that can be due to a stress or a particular abuse which has happened. So now what will happen? This particular FHT will reduce the SNCVTA and RNI signaling of our brain. Now what is this SNC signaling? SNC terms for substantia nigra parts Competitor. This is a dopaminergic uh, neurons containing, which is responsible for a lot of things like it can be a uh, cognitive development, it can be for reward function, it can be for movements. So whenever in mania, what will happen, this SNCVTA signaling will not be giving proper signaling to, uh, will give proper signaling to BG, uh, that is the basal ganglia and thalamus. On the other hand, the RNI will not give proper signaling to the DMN. So this particular RNI signaling is hampered, which means the DMN that is being responsible for thought is not actually being processed or signaling. So our thought process in mania is reduced and uh, excessive of psychosis and affectivity is getting higher. So that is how mania is being uh, formed in our signaling due to some signaling trouble in our brain. Whereas in the other part of the diagram, we can see depression. So now how this depression is happening? So in depression, same the basal ganglia and the thalamus is not able to give signaling to the affectivity and psychosis. So particularly our activity, our energy is too low and the DMN, our thought process is very much elevated. So in thus what is happening? Uh, we are in a very much into thinking zone. We are into a, a very low energy activity zone. We are not able to properly do a lot of activities which should be done. So these two factors depict that all this particular uh, Maniac and depression is all because of our signaling issues which are happening due to this inflammation that is happening due to a lot of mental or mood disorder. Next slide, please. Okay, so this slide is a, a brief about how stress or how the various type of stress as it's been uh, said by Alankrita, there can be ge uh, genetic, there can be environmental, there can be new neurodegenerative stress. All these stress cause inflammation and that will cause epigenetic changes in our brain, uh, brain signaling. There will be some neurotrophic disturbance. The main thing which is getting hampered is the HPA axis. So this HPA axis is the hypothalamus pituitary RNA gland axis. So whenever this our body is getting a lot of stress or any kind of inflammation which is happening, uh, our adrenal gland out of the signaling of a hypothalamus and pituitary the gland gives signaling and produce cortisols. So whenever these cortisols are produced, that means our body is coping up with a lot of stress condition. But whenever the HPA axis alteration happens, means the particular signaling or the proper functioning of that particular uh, function is dis dysregulated and thus there will be some cell uh, degeneration which is known as apoptosis and also there will be some recurrent mood disorders or mood uh, changes which will be seen due to this signaling uh, neurodegenerativity. Next slide please. Okay, so the last part of the bipolar disorder is termed as cyclothymic disorder. So it is when the patient have a following symptoms of fluctuating mood disorder, there will be some numerous periods of hypomanic episode, there will be a depressive symptoms, but all these particular symptoms which will be seen in cyclomatic disorder will be definitely a lesser compared to uh, what we see in bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. But the thing is, there will be a persistent thing which will be happening. There will be an up and down, up and down mood phase, uh, which will be seen in the particular patient who is suffering from a cyclothymic disorder. Next slide, please. Okay, now talking about treatment. So definitely the treatment of this particular uh, disorder or about the uh, 
particular this whole mood disorder will depending depends upon the symptoms of the patient definitely depending upon the symptoms what the patient is currently facing or what has been uh, seen in the past scenario there will be the particular holistic approach which will be seen there first is the ph pharmacotherapy second will be the psychotherapy third will be the cognitive behavioral therapy fourth will be the electrocompulsive convulsive therapy so first pharmacotherapy can be divided as antidepressants can be given there can be antipsychotic drug can be given and mood stabilizer can be given now depending upon if the patient is on depression if the patient is on psychosis the particular drugs will be decided secondly it will be psychotherapy so definitely the role of psychotherapy or counseling comes uh, a more importance compared to the drugs also so first if the basic uh, symptoms are seen in a patient with a unipolar or bipolar disorder both the psychotherapy and cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy can be done with the patient to lower down the symptoms of the particular phase and the last phase is known as electroconvulsive therapy now this electroconvulsive therapy is nothing but the some uh, rays of electric uh, rays which are passed by in the brain signaling by the uh, physician uh, on the when the particular person is in in a anesthetic anesthetic mode why it is done because whenever there is a huge abrupt abuse or huge hyperactiveness which can cause to physical abuse also this particular is the last stage of therapy which is given to the bipolar two patients mainly and uh, this will be helping in nothing but uh, signaling uh, jo disturbance it's happening in our brain cells to combat that and reduce the excessive hyperactiveness of the patients at that particular point next slide okay so these are the two particular uh, uh, research papers or article which has been seen that yes there is a huge role of medication and huge role of uh, psychotherapy or counseling to combat uh, a depression combat bipolar disorder 1 2 and combat excessive hyperactiveness which the patient is facing next slide okay so this is also an article which gives us a detail about lithium being a composition which is used in a medication which reduces the thoughts of suicidal cases in uh, this depressive patient as uh, we can say or the studies is saying that uh, when the person is depressed for a longer period more than 10 years or 15 years six percentage of the patients with depression die due to suicide or there are 30 to 40 percent chances of patient having suicidal thoughts are more so definitely this particular uh, lithium composition of medication helps in uh, reducing the suicidal thought in the brain okay. now uh, 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 rest of the rest of the uh, slides will be uh, said by shagurika di so over to you shagurika di thank you good evening to all thanks tanoy for your nice presentation thanks to uh, mtr cognize team also so tanoy has nicely said about the different uh, mental disorder uh, its mechanism and also its tre treatment she already said that there are a uh, lot of uh, ways to treat the medical disorder like psychotherapy talk therapy use of anti depression drugs and of course a complete change in their lifestyle modification only these treatments cannot be bring the expected result in controlling our mood in recent years there has been a surge in research on the effect of nutrition on the mental health status appetite and weight changes is very common among the people of major depressive disorder individuals with depression might have loss of an appetite and unintentionally they lost their weight some people may increase their appetite and can lead to gain weight when we take a close look on this type of people who are in depression 
the diet of this type of person is uh, far away from adequate that means their food choices and selection of their food is actually not in nutri nutrient dense so nutrition can play a key role in the onset as well as to control the severity of this type of depression so in my upcoming slides i will be discussing how nutrition is important for a mentally unhealthy patient next slide before understanding the role of nutrient in controlling mood disorder we have to take a look on the science behind food and mood that means there is a gut brain axis what we have to understand our gut and brain are physically linked by vagus nerve these are two are able to send messages to one another that means while gut is able to influence emotional behavior in the brain brain can also alter the type of bacteria living our gut sometimes we also called our gut gut as a second brain when we eat nutritionally dense food that promote the growth of good bacteria in our gut system and it promotes the production of the chemical substances that are called neurotransmitter and our brain receives a good message and that yeah. reflects in the good mood, mood on the other hand when the production goes away that means uh, if the production of this neurotransmitter are decreased then our mood is altered next slide in this slide i'm discussing about the three important neurotransmitter and what does they do and the main food sources of this neurotransmitter the first neurotransmitter is dopamine what dopamine does do it mainly secretes when we feel good that means when we are doing uh, doing something good or feeling good the secretion of dopamine is increased and it is a part of our reward system it also known as feel good hormone and the main food sources of this uh, hormone are by bi uh, high biological value protein like meat fish tofu milk egg beans lentils etc and the second one is serotonin what does this uh, serotonin do it mainly helps to manage our sleep and appetite it controls our mood and reduce our pain and anxiety so if there is a de uh, decreased secretion of serotonin the people may lead to in depression and the main food that boost to secret serotonin are chocolate oats dairy foods and other that contain tryptophan that means there is a key relation between the serotonin and tryptophan and what uh, may we know after uh, in the next slide the third one is oxytocin what oxytocin does it mainly helps to maintain our good relationship in uh, society that means it helps to maintain uh, our connection and love uh, with other people and for that's why it also called as love hormone and the main food sources of oxytocin are egg banana salmon nuts legumes bean etc next slide so now we have to understand the relationship between the nutrition and mental health the nutrition and mental health uh, uh, is biodirectionally related the food we eat that affect our mental health and also our mental health status affect what and how well we eat so understanding and managing mental disorder through the nutrition is very becoming now a challenging part of our daily life research continues to grow on understanding the relationship between nutrition and the mind let's now take a look at how different nutrients are related in controlling our mood disorder next slide here we can see the first nutrient is carbohydrate we all know that carbohydrate is a polysaccharide that helps in different ways in different organism especially in human body it's help to control our mood how it uh, how uh, it controls our mood when we take food or any meal rich in carbohydrate then uh, in our body the secretion of insulin is increased when the uh, secretion of insulin is increased 
then it led the sugar uh, to enter into the cells for the production of energy and simultaneously the tryptophan also enters in the brain for the production of neurotransmitter so carbohydrate helps in the production of neurotransmitter but if we take too much carbohydrate it does not do like that so what we have to do we have to do uh, take carbs in limited amount and of course complex carbohydrates should be taken not the refined one um, but if uh, our diet is less in carbohydrate then we may lead to in depression next slide Here, uh, in the right side of the slide, we can see this is an uh, article which shows that, of course, there is a keen relationship of sugar with uh, controlling mood disorder. Here, the article uh, depicts that uh, the people with Western diet, that is controlling high fat, high sugar, they uh, maybe triggers their mood and they may lead easily to depression. What does sugar do? Sugar is the main culprit of our inflammation in the body and brain also. When we take sugar in excess amount, it may cause the growth or the production of bad bacteria in our GI tract. So uh, there is less secretion of uh, dopamine and that leads to in depression. But initially when we take the sugar, we feel very good. Uh, for the secretion of dopamine but in further time or next time when excess sugar is consumed that leads to in our uh, in uh, as, a, as a depression or anxiety uh, so you should avoid excess intake of sugar next slide here's comes the role of protein it controlling mood disorder protein are the building blocks of our body and the simple form of protein are amino acids what does amino acid do amino acids are the main uh, mainly help uh, to form the neurotransmitter that for example we can uh, see tryptophan is the precursor of serotonin and tyrosine is the precursor of phenylalanine and this amino acid should be taken in our body in the form of diet but if we take excess amount of this amino acid to improve our uh, mood, that may lead to harm for our health. Excess amount of phenylalanine, uh, if uh, we take uh, from diet, that may lead to uh, phenylketonuria and that leads to brain damage and mental health retardation. So, uh, adequate amount of protein should be uh, added in our diet. Next slide. The role of essential fatty acid uh, to maintain good, good mental health. Our brain is mainly composed of fat, that is mainly uh, fatty acids like omega-3. So in our diet, we should include omega-3 times fatty acid for that, uh, so, so that we uh, maintain our new, uh, neural or cognitive, sorry, so if we take a uh, adequate amount of essential fatty acid that helps in uh, uh, to perform neural uh, function properly so we should take essential um, fatty acid in the form of vp and dha for neural transduction by activating the perixomal proliferation activated receptors now comes the role of different vitamins this is under uh, research and uh, different study shows that added of vitamin b1 cobalamin folate these all vitamins help to improve our mood next slide role of different minerals to maintain a healthy mood the first one is calcium it is seen that the patient who are using different type of anti-depression drugs they are very prone to uh, bone fracture because of their low absorption in calcium in their blood. The second was is iodine. Iodine mainly provided by the thyroid hormone which ensures the energy metabolism of cerebral cell. It is seen that when a uh, woman is uh, uh, pregnant during that time, if there is a reduction in uh, iodine that induces the severe cerebral dysfunction, eventually it may lead to cretinism. Next, iron. What iron does do? Iron mainly 
uh, is necessary for oxygenation and to produce energy in cerebral parenchyma and also for the synthesis of neurotransmitter and myelin. So if iron deficiency is seen, then uh, this work uh, is not happened properly. And uh, especially in children, it is seen that iron deficiency uh, is very high with the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Iron deficiency in fetus also associated with low cognitive function. Lithium. What does lithium do? That is nicely described by Tanua. I can say that lithium is mainly used as an augmenting agent in depression that impulse control disorder, eating disorder, etc. Next, selenium. Low selenium intake is associated with lower mood status. Zinc. What does zinc do? Zinc can mainly influence the effectiveness of antidepression therapy. Zinc can also protect the brain damage that is caused by use of free radicals. Magnesium. It is needed within the central nervous system because it has a great role in cellular transduction and intracellular signal and transduction. Next slide. So, uh, from the beginning of now, the role of different new from the uh, different role of di different nutrient, we can say that nutrient is very much necessity for improving our mental health. Good, our brain and nervous system depend on nutrition to build up new protein cells and tissues. All the food stuff that are uh, very crucial for maintaining our proper mental health or controlling. Uh, our mood disorder, we can categorize into uh, three main parts that are complex carbohydrate, lean proteins, and fatty acids. We all know the main sources of these foods. The number one is complex carbohydrate. We can get complex carbohydrate easily from different starchy leaf, uh, leaves, vegetables, brown rice, millets, quino, beets, and sweet potato. What does it do? It mainly keeps us satisfied than the simple starch. So we should uh, add the complex carbohydrate rather than refined one. The second one is lean protein. Lean protein is very uh, good for giving energy and uh, it helps to uh, think uh, uh, as easily. And the main sources of lean proteins are chicken, meat, fish, eggs, soybean, nuts and seeds. The third one is fatty acids. Uh, as we uh, know that fat is very important for uh, functioning of the brain, brain properly and improve our cognitive part. And the sources of these uh, fatty acids are fish, meat, nuts, uh, eggs, flax seeds, etc. Next slide. So what can uh, we see? The, uh, after knowing the role of different nutrient in controlling the mood disorder, uh, wh uh, um, what can uh, we say that does diet helps to prevent mental health or is there any nut nutrition intervention helpful to treatment this condition? What will be the answer? Next slide. From this discussion, it is seen that several mental health disorder is, is, uh, is appeared to have linked with increased level of inflammation. So, all the food stuff which uh, include which have anti-inflammatory properties have a great role to reduce the severity of the condition so here the answer will be yes food can treat a mental patient or um, uh, if we giving him or her a proper diet and adding uh, anti-inflammatory diet or prescribing anti-inflammatory diet uh, she can or he can uh, easily revive from her stage and uh, what will be the role and what food should be avoided or included in our diet that will be discussed my uh, co-speaker Ms. Srija Chatterjee so I am now hand over to Srija. Thank you Shagurika for your nice presentations. Thank you Cognize and thank you Sumindu sir for giving me this opportunity. Some positive changes we can do to improve our mental health. We all know food is important to our body, but healthy eating habits and atmosphere is important for our mental health also. First, eat a set of intervals throughout a day. Like small frequent meals throughout the day instead of having four big meals in a day. Second, 
is choose less refined sugars and eat more whole grains so we will not eat candy cakes pastry cream rolls what uh, what shall we eat raisins dates flavored yogurts it is etc for our sugar too that is uh, include proteins at each meal food is eat a variety of food amra shobai amader shobari ek khabar bar bar khete bhalo lage na tai prottek meal jodi nana rakom khabar thake prottek meal e jodi nana rakom khabar thake tale kheteo bhalo lage ar seta amader mental health er khetreo khub bhalo hoy fifth include uh, omega 3 fatty acids like peas and nuts we shall uh, also include omega 3 fatty acids rich foods for our brain development some omega 3 rich foods like peas seafood seeds like uh, we all know flax seeds and the chia seeds are commonly known as a rich source of omega 3 fatty acids as a nutritionist uh, we say maintain their healthy weight during adequate and uh, drink adequate amount of water in a day and exercise is also important second slide so there are some foods that need to be avoided by everyone like high glycemic index index foods or simple carbs like white bread white rice potatoes pasta it is caffeine we love uh, tea and uh, coffee but coffee contains relatively more caffeine than tea we should uh, we should uh, sorry we should not eat high sodium content food or uh, gluten if you uh, we all generally know uh, or suggest if you have gluten uh, sensitivity or celiac disease so should be avoided all wheat products and uh, alcohol use may uh, alcohol use may exacerbate the symptoms okay next one as also my co speaker sagrika di is uh, explained very well that many people reach comfort food during stress depressions and anxiety when starchy foods uh, and sweet dishes taste good and may feel emotionally satisfying in the short term that because it elevates our mood, our blood sugar levels and uh, triggers the pleasure center of our brains on the other hand healthy eating habits help to keep our blood sugar levels stable which can be help to maintain our mood throughout the day next slide please okay this is some research paper uh, in a, a article form that is researchable saffron is content crocin crocin have been demonstrated that the saffron not only inhibits the uptake of monoamines but also exhibit both n methyl d aspartate receptors antagonism and y amino butyric acid agonist a saffron extract increased dopamine levels in the brain without changing the levels of other brain hormones such as serotonin next please this so is rolling uh, roll of iron in depression this is also a research paper iron is a cofactor iron is an important cofactor for serotonin production this uh, neurotransmitters involved in emotional behavior depend on neuron aromatic hydroxylase functioning with iron as essential cofactor nor adrenaline also has impact on neuroplasticity by a brain derived neurotrophic factors which is key for prefrontal and hippocampus neurons playing a role in 
expression uh, in depressions. Next is uh, ferritin. Ferritin deficiency in multiple sclerosis patients uh, is associated with an exacerbation of depressive disorders and decline in quality of life. Symptoms of uh, multiple sclerosis patients are inversely proportional to mood and quality of life. And some examples of uh, iron rich foodstuffs we all know apples, raisins. Date, avocado, strawberries. Next one, please. So, role of mushrooms in depression. Here is another one. Mushrooms have been neuroprotective properties. Medicine, medicinal mushrooms are valuable source of food and medicine, and are increasingly being used as supplements or as alternative medicines. In standard healthcare, numerous studies have provided insights into the neuroprotective effects of medicinal mushrooms, which are attributed to their antioxidant and neuroinflammatory, cholinesterase inhibitory, and neuroprotective properties. Some medicinal mushrooms are uh, reishi, leon mani, cordycips, and chaga. Okay, next, please. role of polyphenols this is also a research paper in art in an article form it comprises more than 100 trillion microbial cells that inhibit the small and large intestine and these interactions between microbiota and intestinal epithelium can cause physiological changes in the brain and influence mood and uh, behavior some examples of polyphenols rich foods Blueberries, plum, cherries, apples, strawberries, black currants, black olives, dark chocolate, black tea, hazelnut, and some spices, including turmeric, clove, cinnamon, ginger, and cumin are also high in polyphenols. So thank you everyone. I will to uh, I will like to hand over to Miss Tonoya Banerjee for the rest part of presented by Tonoya. Okay, so thank you so much Agorika Di and Srija for nicely explaining the relationship and role of uh, food and its particular nutrients to combat the mental or mood disorder. So these are the very important research papers or articles that actually proves that there is a huge role of food and especially nutrients, particular nutrients to combat uh, mental disorder or, or mood disorder, specifically depression. So how it happens, basically it will be uh, shown by reducing the uh, neurodegeneration or the signaling uh, problem, which is basically happened, which I've already shown in the previous slides, the signaling property or the serotonin and dopamine uptake is being enhanced by this particular foods. Now the particular particular role of antioxidants we all know the role of antioxidant and specially carotenoids which are known as beta carotenes or which are found in carrots etc they will be lowering our inflammation particularly and also will reduce the oxidative stress in our brain and thus what will happen we have already seen whenever the inflammation is higher the signaling pathway is reduced so this particular food will enhance our uh, signaling pathway, will reduce the inflammation, which is caused by depression and stress. Next slide, please. Okay, now role of vitamin E. So this is a study which has been done by a particular group of people where they have done a, a research of giving 15 mg per day of uh, magnesium as a supplement or food to the particular rats and seen that there is an usual brain development or the role or, or the rate of depression has been reduced. That is a diagnosis or the conclusion of this particular research paper is uh, 
15 gram per day of magnesium can actually reduce the rate of depression in particular patients. So we can give or we can include a good amount of magnesium in the particular day-to-day uh, -day lifestyle of the patient. It can be in the form of various fishes, it can be in the form of various fruits, speci specifically nuts and vegetables. Next slide. Okay, so now role of copper and zinc together uh, is very important because these are the two trans uh, tra trace elements which are in a ratio very much effective for neural signaling of our uh, brain. Specifically, what they do is they reduce the formation of oxidative stress and also inflammatory response in our body or in our brain cells. And thus, they will be improving the signaling of serotonin and dopamine and thus the rate of depression will be reduced. Next slide. Okay. Now, the role of gallic acid. So, gallic acid is a compound which is called as 3,4,5 trihydroxybenzoic acid. So, this has the property uh, of anti inflammatory, antioxidant, and anaglycan glaric effect and basically this will be also acting as a role where it will be reducing the oxygen oxidative stress production by p2x7 pathway and also it will inhibit ferroptosis and thus there will be proper signaling pathway which will be improving the pain and the depression which are mainly seen in the patient of the uh, particular depressive or bipolar disorder. Now, in the slide, we can see various foods which can be given uh, to the patient to improve or increase the gallic acid, which are ripe guava, uh, raspberry fruit, grape, uh, then pomegranate, uh, white mulberry, etc. It is etc. Next slide, please. Okay. Last but not the least, magnesium. As we all know, magnesium is very, very important uh, element to uh, increase the synaptic cleft transmission of uh, signals between two uh, neurons. And also it is result uh, resultant to signaling pathway. If it is not proper, uh, magnesium is not there, there will be not proper signaling of GABA. And also it will be hampering the proper signal. So, magnesium rich foods which we can give to the patient who are suffering from magnesium deficiency or to improve the depressive state of that particular person are all nuts, avocados, fish, even some amount of dark chocolate is also very much important as it contains magnesium to improve our mood and also reduce the rate of depression. Next slide. Okay, so this is one of the very important uh, slide which is depicts role of counseling. Now, as I've already uh, shared a slide where I've talked about treatments. Now, treatments are of various types depending upon the symptoms. There can be medication which are known as antidepressant, antipsychotic, which could be given to the patients. But apart from that, counseling plays a very much important role. It can be done in the form of uh, interpersonal communication. It can be done in the form of uh, uh, cohesive uh, uh, interpersonal uh, talking with a person, or it can be done with a complete uh, uh, appointments of particular timings to do the uh, to know the particular phase in where the patient is now currently. Now, as a dietitian, uh, we also have to be very much uh, keen about counseling because we have to be very much empathetic towards the patient. We have to understand uh, the patient's uh, scenario. We have to understand uh, what they are facing because it's definitely something which is different from a normal day-to-day -day lifestyle which we deal. Definitely the patient and the patient's family member will be very much uh, in concern. So as a dietitian, we have to give a proper uh, nutrient guidelines, which is already explained by uh, the various slides. Apart from that, also we have to be counseling and definitely there will be a set of counseling which will be required. Not a single time we can be properly able to see, say what the patient uh, 
uh, will go through, but definitely a set of counseling will help to make their state very much uh, effective. Next slide, please. Okay, so now as we are talking about uh, this particular mood disorder, we are talking about not just a particular uh, part but it should be a holistic approach so not only diet not only medication not only counsel it has to be a holistic part so definitely exercise will play a huge role in it for improving our signaling improving our dopamine uh, say a neurotransmitter like dopamine serotonin releasing factor so special uh, part should be uh, emphasize on exercise the ex uh, exercise which will be really helping in improving our mood especially is yoga uh, followed by breathing exercise walking running aromatherapy is also a part of it so according to the who guideline the exercise should be according to the set and according to the specific person's age and what the per any other comorbidities are there or not next slide so summing up this whole uh, presentation, I would like to address, though medical uh, science has been elevated a lot, it has improved a lot, but still talking about mental disorder, talking about a person who is facing this particular disorder is still a taboo. If we are facing such condition we are not being exposed by the particular family member or particular society who is completely supportive to us there is a lot of restriction because they will be thinking taking to a psychiatrist taking for a counseling is a huge part which the society will not accept so the point or overall uh doing this particular presentation is a awareness which is required in a lot of uh, particular section of our india till now and definitely neuro uh, neuro nutritional neuroscience uh, neurology nutrition all are related to each other as uh, shagurika and shrija has already said about nutrition as a person are also taking a lot of treatments lot of antipsychotic antidepressant drugs the appetite which is the main thing the the food uh, intake of the patient will be really lowered so as a dietitian there is a huge in, a role for us to counsel the patient to take how much in how much quantity so that there is no malnourishment there is idle body weight maintained or there is also not such weight gain which is happening and overall this particular mood and food is really really interrelated and we as a dietitian we as a uh, particular uh, awareness uh, section should really take this up and always uh, always give the message that mood and the food is really interrelated to each other thank you so much over to you uh, fatma and Preetha, and definitely sir for your inputs no words to say how much uh, like a uh, uh, heartful congratulation to all the speakers very informative session it was and so many things we learned about food and mood and uh what i say i hope I, uh, my, uh, the audience present till now will agree with me that uh, uh the contribution of nutrition in our physical as well as mental health is so 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 important in last few days and month even and even in covid uh, scenario we have seen that the um, uh, cases of depressions and uh, even the students who are giving competitive exams are so much depressed and stressed due to exams and also their nutrition are so lacking so yeah as a dietitian we do give new diets uh, so our our, uh, our uh, work is not limited to just prescribing diet only but also counseling as we all know that counseling is the main part of our uh, uh, you know, diet uh, counseling and uh, counseling is the main part of our to come on to make interaction with that year with the patients so uh, we have to also see the mental health condition as well as physical health condition so um, if uh, I would like to invite all the, uh, if any qu uh, questions from audience can unmute yourself and uh, ask a question. And uh, beside uh, beside this presentation, uh, there are some uh, Q&A session yeah. will be conducted by my co-moderator, Ms. Preetha Bishwas. So over to Preetha. Thank you, Fatma. Uh, indeed, it was a very insightful session. All the speakers have elaborately discussed about the different types, the 
different uh, prevention methods, treatments, and also the most important related to our fraternity, that is the diet part. So uh, I also want to thank all the audience for staying with us till the end. Now I have a couple of questions uh, for the speakers. I would like to request all the speakers, including Srija and Alankrita, uh, to switch on their videos. Yes, so uh, since Tonadi have ended the presentation so beautifully, so my first question is to Tonadi. Uh, like in your part, you have elaborately uh, discussed about the bipolar uh, disorder, right? So any like after listening to it, the first question that comes to my mind is that, is there any chances uh, my children or uh, like my other family members, especially the elderly one, have any chance of uh, getting or inheriting this bipolar disorder? What are your views? Uh, yes, uh, it is like many researches and uh, it is seen that uh, there will be a chances of our uh, generation or next generation to have this genes of uh, uh, bipolar uh, disorder to continue but the rate of the thing which is been to me and to my uh, family or to my uh, children will be different uh, like it will be varying from person to person but definitely there is a chance that all the particular uh, generation of mine next can have this uh, bipolar disorder or specifically depression to fo follow and continue okay got it uh, now I am coming to my other speaker, Shagurika Deep. Since you have discussed in your part the dietary approach, how to deal with this uh, disorder, especially this uh, psychological uh, in the psychological aspects. Nutrition is a very important part, and how to deal with that. So my question is to you: Is uh, how the sodium intake? and depression is correlated with each other like is in there any relation between the two that you can highlight uh generally for everyone uh, we should prescribe a limited amount of sodium that is uh, from the rda diet chart uh, we should prescribe a limited amount of uh, sodium but uh, if uh, the sodium intake is high or low that uh, it may affect our mood. How? Uh, there is a term used uh, that is hyponatremia psychosis. What is hyponatremia psychosis? Uh, when we take more sodium or less uh, sodium, it may alter the uh, secretion of neurotransmitter. And that cause the shortness of our breath, confusion, uh, anxiety, rapid heart, heartbeat. So uh, you should uh, limit your sodium intake according to your DHR. Yes. Okay. So uh, sodium, we restrict sodium in case of uh, CVD. But now we are we have learned that sodium is also excess sodium is also restricted in this type of neural disorder. Right. So uh, now I am coming to the question that comes to my mind. Like, uh, is there uh, to Tonadi obviously? Uh, since she has beautifully described about the different uh, disorder and the types of depression stress. So is there any particular timing or periods for uh, the depression to persist? Like if you can give an insight from your views. Uh, actually, it is seen that mainly in the colder uh, phase of our season or when the particular timings are very gloomy, where cold winter season, the particular depression is more uh, uh, precisely, it's like more evidently seen in the particular patients. In basically, in uh, many researches and in patients also, it has been seen that mainly winter season mein aisa hota hai ki they are like depressed, they cannot do their activities, the signalings are very much low and uh, they will be like continuously sleeping or they will be continuously into bed only. Not even they will take the foods like the normal lunch, normal dinner will be also uh, getting skipped. At times, it is seen that the patient cannot wake up and go for their day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle also. So this much also, this is things. And when we get into summer or very humid or hot climate, they are trying, like they are becoming active and they are getting hyperactive at a particular time. So it's seen in patients in practical that during this winter seasons or rainy when the gloomy seasons comes 
the depression criteria or depression phase enhanced and the person gets into a very much condition uh, like it is not a, a particular with the, it, with the disease they are into a bed but definitely for depression in a very severe cases it's seen that they are continuously in bed and all caregivers are required for particular uh doing all of the all lifestyle and definitely the medications are also enhanced by the doctors in that particular situation Okay, so it varies according to season and it's very much correlated with the variation in the season and also temperature. Yes. Okay. Last but not the least, uh, we often get feels like very low sometimes and tired or stressed. And we intended to drink coffee and that makes us feel uh, energized. Right. But uh, that also uplifted our mood and stimulates it. But in case of depression, uh, why should we avoid this excess uh, caffeine intake or coffee intake? Uh, can Shagodikadi kindly highlight some of the things uh, from your side? Bangla ekta kotha ase kano to kono jinishi beshi bhalo na. To coffee khette u shetai hoyeche. What does coffee do? So caffeine firstly stimulate our central nervous system. So when we feel uh, down, then we take a cup of coffee. But uh, excess amount of coffee, what does? Uh, we all know that uh, tryptophan helps to production of serotonin. And uh, in this mechanism, when tryptophan uh, converted to serotonin, there are red limiting enzyme has a red limiting enzyme, and that name is tryptophan hydroxylase. So excess caffeine reduces that secretion of uh, that red limiting enzyme, tryptophan hydroxylase. So. Uh, in depression or any mood disorder, we should not take excess amount of coffee. We should uh, maintain a limit. That's all. So that's all. Uh, that's a part of the panel discussion. I think uh, there is no questions from the audience side because uh, it really uh, makes a sense that we often uh, use the term mindful eating in counseling our patients but what do we actually know about that so this uh, session totally gives us an elaborate idea about this term uh, so if sad is there then i can invite sir to speak a word fatma can you just see yes sir has hmm. left Joined the meeting, but now left. I mean, maybe there's some network some issue. Yeah, yeah. Network issue with sir. sir. Yeah, sir joined. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. You can share a word. So what to speak? I don't know. I just rush, open my door, open my laptop, and just I am sitting. The entire last uh, one hour, twenty minute, I was just listening in my car. I was driving. It was a splendid, and I don't know before Durga Puja, many uh, people have not joined today. But uh, what they have missed is really they have missed. But thank you, Charnok and Shutitho, Shoma, Bonani, or whoever is present. I will request other two speakers to switch on your camera, speak, please, Srija and Alonkrita. By that time, I want to mention one important thing that uh, Alonkrita has done a very good job, fantastic job. Obviously, no words for Tanoya and Shagorika and even for Srija, in spite of her illness, she has tried her best, but there is a lot of improvement re required Srija. I think there is some lacking thing, but uh, obviously, thanks to Alankrita. Alankrita is there or she has left? Alankrita is not there. Alankrita, Fatma, just give a call to Alankrita and please ask her okay. to join. Is connected due to yes, some network sir, recording. Yeah, she's okay. facing some network Okay, issue. okay, okay. By that time, we should continue. One important thing at the last, Tana, you are highlighting about the counseling, which is not only from the psychiatrist or the psychologist, but as well as from the dietitian perspective also. Last to last week, I counseled one bipolar patient. Today, when I was counseling one uh, is like 13 years old, ADHD patient with some depression. So doctor has sent for them because the patient was very much lean and the BMI was 16 and doctor has advised for weight gain. So the mother and the father was very much worried and they showed me with the uh, last past picture of that girl. So this has happened one with one of my bulimia nervosa patients also. The patient was very good, but uh, Fatma was mentioning just few minutes in the interaction. Fatma, you were telling about the COVID period. 
that how drastically many we have faced this this is not bipolar is not related to covid but many kind of depressions are related to that so one 16 years old girl who has old boy who has missed his class 10 exam and after that he was a very talkative boy and after that shagorika you will not believe that he has stopped speaking and eto chintito tar ma ebong baba ebong tar por theke share kono kotha bole na he is not able to speak anything then now the speech therapy psychometric therapy every therapy is going and speech means he can speak but he is not speaking boba hoye jayni but psychologically ar kichu bhalo lage na lost interest because of this depression and when i counsel counsel because that point i want to highlight from tonaya's thing uh fatma also can switch on and fatma can take a screenshot of all the speakers Achha. so that point i want to highlight uh, important thing that tonaya how counseling 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 tomar ki bhalo lage ki khete bhalo lage school e kota bondhu chilo keno school e jacho na school e ei je kotha bolte start korlam and i started a lot of time and after that he spoke and the father was saying that apni ki kore kotha bolan and it is not like and the same thing with the girl also one thing i asked that what you want boro hoye ki hote chao me ta ke jigesh korlam jokhon kono kothai bolche na bhalo lage na tiffin khabo na na kete kete bmi 16 height achieve kore geche 5 feet 2 height achieve kore geche but the bmi 16 so and again speaking and the mother and the father was talking sometime after that the father has realized just what the father did just to me chup karo ora onara ekhon connect korar chesta korche and suddenly i was connecting and i was trying to take the dietary recall from the uh, girl only from the patient only i am not uh, i am not eager to listen from the uh, this what what i called uh, mother or father je tumi ki khao tumi bolo o kichhui bolche na edik odik takachhe mane not a single word je jol ta uthe sokale khay I was just appreciating about you before I am continuing my you have done a splendid job and the very clarity in your voice very much like clearly you have mentioned all the points and uh, very well you have covered all the points and hand over to Tonoya though I was traveling and driving but I tried my in that scenario I have missed two times my usual track in the Belgoria Express Highway or BT Road I missed the track and I moved to some other places and five to eight kilometers I roam and roam and again I came to Belgiria Express Highway but it was splendid and Anunna ma'am was Anunna ma'am will give the feedback later because she was controlling the mobile she was telling that really you people are doing very good and people should listen to this speech even to Shagorika also I want to thank you uh, very well very nicely I've done so so that lady that girl after that, or ma bolche bolo bolo tumi ki hote chao bolo hoy. Tokhon mane na ma jane mane ami bolchi. So ma the mother tell that now uh, mother tell the girl that you tell sir do not hesitate. What you want to be, what you want to be, erkhane kono lodger power karon nai. Ami bolchi ki hote chao. Nishchay doctor engineer na thale lodger pete na. So now you want to be a teacher? No. You want to be a uh, like fashion designer? No. Then the mother said he want to be a vet doctor because he is an animal lover. Ghar mein uska chiriya hai, bodri pakhiya chhe, and ghar mein uska uh, rabbit hai, ye hai, wo hai. I mean, this is very noble profession. Do you know in the foreign countries how the vet doctors are getting appreciation? How they are getting the uh, money? same like the human doctor, the vet doctors have the same importance. And it is very difficult for because the vets cannot speak. So it is very difficult for us to diagnose this problem. So it is really, I want, I thank that girl. And literally when I, uh, I saw my mobile, I saw my mobile, I saw my mobile, I saw my last time I had a deal. He said, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat. Yes, I will take paratha. And I will take cheese grated paratha with some paneer, with some cheese, and with that, I will not take. প্রথমে ওর মা বলেছিল আমি ওকে গোলা রুটি দেব তো বলল না ওটা আমার বন্ধুদের কাছে প্রেস্টিজ হয়ে যাচ্ছে আমি গোলা রুটি খাবো না আমি স্কুলে গোলা রুটি নিয়ে যায় কেউ আমি হু সেট ইট ইজ গোলা রুটি ইট ইজ চিল্লা 
that do you know how much it is important in foreign countries who said it is gola ruti so suddenly i showed some recipe from internet and from my laptop and suddenly i show how to fold that and how to do that and the girl was very much interested the pale face no your hair is already beautiful i said the girl your hair is already beautiful but your skin is not glowing so will you take one fruit every day your skin will glow you will look better you are now very much thin then i asked her to pull my hand grip strength and it was coming severely weak so okhane interest pelo je na amake khete hobe to ei bhabe that's why tonoya i am highlighting just a second that's why i was telling tonoya you said in the last na counseling so i really like that in the practice also i have not seen that slide that one even alankrita has i like you have highlighted about the role of magnesium so first and foremost i did counseling of four or five patient today so my 90% dedication was counseling about the patient so how to counsel and this we have learned in cognized nutrition also and inter life that is like you have to do the same job same profession hmm. so that's all from my side and congratulation to srija shagorika fatma obviously preetha you you both are there to support them and you did a and really thanks to alankrita i have asked you to change the poster several times and you are in the cafe you have managed so this is what we call dedication yesterday i was very much angry with alankrita that what we are doing we are not uh, supposed to do that so thank you all those who are present till from the beginning to end thank you all the audience and whatever patient can come to you you, you never know right mainly tanoya is every day seeing a diabetes patient a diabetes patient with bipolar to may come to you so now you are very much confident even shagorika alankrita srija jodi ekta bipolar eshe jay ba jodi erom kono peshe jay now you are confident so ami ki kori maximum counseling kore ei je additional food group gulo ami ebar incorporate korte thaki ami khub beshi diet calculation and menu plan eo jai na ami extra ar ekta rachi te counseling korlam fatma today ek patient tha online rachi ka ultimately bahut dehati and bahut gaon ka patient tha phir bhi hum usko bahut bar disconnected hua ek bar whatsapp call me एक बार गूगल मीट में लास्ट टाइम ओवर द फोन में फिर भी बहुत कुछ समझाना मुश्किल हो रहा था तो मैंने लास्ट में एग्री किया एंड उसको प्रीथा से कनेक्ट करवा दिया प्रीथा बोस से सो शी इज आल्सो इन रांची सो प्रीचा को समझा दिया एंड बोला जे ऑफलाइन जाके डायट चार्ट लो बिकॉज कुछ हाँ। कुछ पेशेंट ना ऑनलाइन नहीं समझेगा सो so ये बहुत हाँ वी कैन स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग इट इज गेटिंग एक्सटेंडेड